Watch out for the right hook as Atari Archive looks at boxing. While you would get the impression that David Crane was pumping out Activision's early catalog based on the last two videos, Bob Whitehead's third party debut showed up the same month with boxing. This isn't too surprising a choice for his next game to work on. Whitehead was behind Atari's home run and football games, and referred to himself as a wannabe sports guy as a child. Furthermore, it's also a sport that fits into his sweet spot of being simple enough that implementing an AI opponent isn't too big a challenge. Whitehead elaborated on this in an interview in Video Games Magazine from August 1982, where he said that he likes working on sports games because the rules are already defined, so he can be a bit lazy and focus on how the game plays. Like Dragster, boxing takes some of its cues from an Atari arcade game. In this case, it's an unreleased game simply called Boxer that, much like Whitehead's game, features an overhead viewpoint of two men in a boxing ring wailing on each other. Whitehead said that he remembered seeing the arcade game while working at Atari, and while he didn't set out to copy it directly, it did influence his own title much the same way that a musician will be influenced by what they've heard before. In its unfinished state, Boxer is a bit of a mess, but the idea there was sound enough that the Activision VCS release is a real standout game. Boxing was a relatively new part of the home video game landscape. A text-based computer version called Olympic Boxing was written by Jesse Lynch and published in David Al's 101 Basic Computer Games book, where you type in your moves, as well as your boxer's strengths and weaknesses. There was a portable boxing video game, sold in North America by Bambino in 1980, and on the home console front, APF published a boxing game for the MP1000 in 1979 that, according to the memoirs of engineer Ed Smith, was based off of the Rock'em Sock'em Robots toy he got for his kids, and written by their primary game software developer, a woman named Linda. This version had high and low punches, blocking several computer opponents, multiple rounds, and some limited movement within the ring. Still, there's no indication either of these were a factor in Whitehead's development of his VCS title. Both APF and Activision's graphical takes also feature design choices that show why the sport is a good choice for a video game. Factors like space control, effective blocking, and even, in the case of Whitehead's game, combination attacks against your opponent. Unsurprisingly, a number of these design choices would become important aspects of the fighting game genre in the years ahead. I'm not saying that either of these boxing titles are fighting games in the modern sense, but there are certainly commonalities here. Whitehead said that the boxer sprites are basically identical, with him simply changing the size and graphics on the fly. This is to say that since a sprite on the VCS can change size and be multiplexed into multiple objects, think the plane formations in combat, Whitehead changed these on each line of the screen to create the boxers. A similar technique was used to produce the shark and fishing derby, but the end result here is that you have two large, relatively high-resolution sprites for the boxers, with smooth animation for their arms, in keeping with Activision's cartoony house style. There's also an animation for a blocked punch, and a little smash nose animation for a successful hit. Despite the simplistic graphics, this all gives boxing a distinctive visual style. Whitehead also claims credit for the on-screen Activision logo sprite seen in all of their games as a simple little visual kernel. He described it as a cute thing that he got working in the labs, and the developers all agreed that it should be used in their games specifically for brand recognition and marketing purposes. Much like Fishing Derby, boxing's major game selection options come down to whether or not the game is running with one player or two. The difficulty switches adjust the movement speed of each boxer, allowing players to handicap themselves or the computer by moving slower in the ring. The boxing match itself is about two minutes long, with the winner being whoever has the highest score. Long-range punches are worth one point, while close-up blows are worth two. If one player scores 100 points, then that is counted as a knockout and an automatic victory. Each blow knocks the one being hit back, but if they're knocked into the ropes, it's possible to land multiple punches in a row, with the opponent being bounced back and forth between punches for a brief period of time. Whitehead said this was an intentional little secret he put into the game, and it's key to getting those knockouts. Helpfully, the game automatically picks your swing based on your location compared to your opponent. The computer is a surprisingly worthy foe, and its presence keeps the game engaging even when you don't have another person to play against. While it would have been interesting to see different opponent personalities in the vein of the APF game, Activision's fighter knows how to take shots when it can get them in, and does a pretty decent job of trying to block your blows accordingly. 
the computer opponent has some simple aggressiveness programmed in. If the computer is behind on score, they'll get aggressive, and after the one minute mark has been passed, the computer will get tired and have slower reactions. This is something of a godsend, given that playing a couple rounds of this game with the stock Atari joystick will tire a player out too. Something Whitehead obliquely alludes to in the manual, and the reason why he set the timer to two minutes. As it turns out, holding the base of your joystick while also shoving the stick in all directions to maneuver around the ring is really taxing, and this is a funky bit of game design that is entirely lost if you're just playing the game with a modern controller. This physical exhaustion playing the game was noted by Bill Kunkel and Arnie Katz in their video magazine review of the game, noting that players will want a rest period between rounds, advice they repeated in the first issue of Electronic Games, where they did a roundup of VCS software. The pair seemed to really enjoy the game, as it received an honorable mention in their 1981 Arcade Alley Awards in the categories of Best Head-to-Head -head Game, Best Sports Game, and Most Innovative. Mattel would publish its own boxing game seemingly in October 1981, though this version has much more in common with APF's take than Activision's, from the angle to the very methodology of the boxing controls. That said, this game brings its own refinements. Players can choose from several different boxers with their own stats, though they cannot mirror match the exact same choices, and different game speeds. They also have multiple types of punches to choose from in the bout itself, along with feints and dodges. The game has 15 90 second rounds to go through, with winners being based on points if no knockouts occur. In typical Intellivision fashion, the aim here is to try and make the game close to the real deal, and this version certainly is more accessible to new players than some of their other attempts at home sports. The only downside is that this version has no computer opponent, but that didn't stop Electronic Games from gushing about the quality of this rendition. And surprisingly, Atari itself would not publish its own take on boxing on the VCS until 1988, when real sports boxing finally made its debut. This take is in line with the Intellivision version, with multiple boxers, a side angle view, and in ring mobility in the vein of Whitehead's own boxing title. The complexity is what you'd expect from a game of its era, but this does render it a bit harder to jump into compared to the relative simplicity of Activision's version. Boxing would not be Whitehead's last trip to the sports well on the VCS. We'll see the next such game in the few months with skiing, and he would eventually follow this up with Skyjinx in the years to come. Boxing may be the most approachable of all of these, though. Matches are speedy, if exhausting, it's immediately apparent what you're trying to do, and it's really just fun to go head-to-head -head with your friends. It's simple and certainly not the most realistic take on the sport, but it works incredibly well for the hardware it's running on. There's no indication that Activision's boxing had any influence on future titles in the genre, but this doesn't detract from the timelessness of the game itself. It's no Space Invaders or Adventure, but boxing is still a real standout for 1980 on the VCS. Next time, we're doubling up on checkers.